Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. China Central Television announced a shocking breakthrough in chip technology. China's domestic chip team was able to make chips on a glass substrate, which is seen as an opportunity to break the monopoly of the Western silicon substrate. A professor at the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China also said in an interview that if this opportunity can be seized, it may bring an opportunity for China's chip industry to change lanes and overtake. According to media reports, the U.S. Department of Commerce sent a warning letter to Congress, saying that they are investigating the use of RISC-V chip instruction sets by a large number of Chinese companies, believing that this may pose a threat and risk to the United States. The U.S. Department of Commerce also said that it may take measures to deal with this potential risk, which seems a bit absurd. Does the United States really intend or dare to ban China from using RISC-V technology? RISC-V is a chip instruction set architecture that was originally open sourced by a research team at the University of California, Berkeley, due to funding constraints, making it free for anyone and team around the world to use. One of the founders of RISC-V moved its headquarters to Switzerland, which has always been regarded as a neutral country to avoid being controlled by the United States. However, Considering that Switzerland had confiscated Russia's $8.8 billion deposit in Switzerland at the beginning of the year and compensated it to Ukraine, its neutrality is questionable. So, is it possible to close the RISC-V architecture? It is possible. Many people may not understand the importance of the RISC-V architecture to China's independent chip development. Intel's x86 architecture has a monopoly in the PC chip field, while mobile chips are dominated by the ARM architecture of the British ARM company. Huawei's Kirin chip purchased ARM's license. The RISC-V architecture has the potential to compete with the x86 and ARM architectures, and it is still open source, so many Chinese companies such as Huawei, Alibaba, ZTE and Singhua Unigroup, have joined the RISC-V International Foundation. RISC-V is also seen as the key for Chinese chip companies to break the monopoly of European and American instruction set architectures. The reason why this architecture is popular in China and abroad is that many companies are dissatisfied with the high licensing fees and completely closed open source policies of the ARM architecture. Against the backdrop of the United States strengthening of chip control, the open source RISC-V architecture has received widespread attention. A landmark event is that Google adapted RISC-V architecture chips in Android 12 in December 2022. The Linux operating system also supports this architecture. In China, Pingtu GE has open-sourced its four self-developed Xiantai RISC-V processors, which means that anyone can produce the same processors as Xiantai for free without paying patent fees. Last August, the RISC-V Working Committee was established in China, bringing together large companies such as Huawei, Tencent and Baidu to begin formulating China's domestic industry standards for RISC-V, with the ultimate goal of using the RISC-V architecture to overcome the two major problems of servers and desktop computers. Technological development does have national boundaries, and those who insist that technology has no national boundaries are just comforting themselves. Even the open-source RISC-V architecture has the possibility of being cut off. The United States is trying to hinder the rise of Chinese chips with open-source RISC-V technology.
In the first quarter of this year, the output of domestic chips increased by 40%, and the Chinese chip team also successfully conquered the third-generation glass perforation technology. The reversal of domestic chips will not be hindered only by the small actions of the United States. The so-called glass chip uses a specific glass material instead of the traditional silicon wafer to realize the three-dimensional packaging technology on the glass, punches one million holes on a glass substrate of about one centimeter, and then uses metal to build the connection shape between the circuits. The world's old chip giants are all laying out glass substrate technology, and China's glass substrate chip manufacturing technology ranks at the forefront. In March 2024, Samsung of South Korea established a new department to bring together subsidiaries such as Samsung Electronics, Samsung Display and Samsung Electromechanics, and has begun to develop glass substrates. Samsung's goal is to establish a glass substrate production line in 2024, start production in 2025, and finally start mass production in 2026, which shows that using glass for chip packaging is a practical operation, not just a sensational thing. In addition, Intel, the US chip giant, announced in September 2023 that it plans to start mass production of glass substrates in 2030, and Japan's Elbiden, the world's largest substrate supplier, is also exploring glass chip substrate technology. The goal of these manufacturers is not only to manufacture glass chips, but to become suppliers of glass substrates and wafers. When silicon-based chips reach their process limits, glass substrates will become the next outlet for chip manufacturing. Compared with silicon substrates, a major breakthrough of glass substrates is that they solve the warping and deformation problem of organic substrates, improve the yield rate of chip manufacturing, can add more transistors, and have better heat dissipation advantages. The final process cost may even be reduced by about 50%. As Western countries increasingly suppress Chinese chips, the Chinese chip industry is working on solving the mass production problem of mature processes on the one hand and on conquering advanced processes and materials on the other. Now the US Department of Commerce intends to strike China on the chip open source architecture, and the final outcome is still unknown. If Europe and the United States did not block Chinese chips, what would the development of China's domestically produced chips look like?